So Venu already has explored uh, in India in the last two three years. What are the major trends that you see, and what is the future? What is the future is a big question, but let's start looking at what we have seen, what we are seeing today. I think uh, the first thing that you see, of course, is a proliferation of content. Um, the formats, the shapes and sizes that it's coming in, the kind of stories that are being told, that is definitely one big area where you're seeing a tremendous amount of change. Uh, the other is consumption, the pattern of consumption itself, um, the devices from which we are being, uh, it's being consumed, and the quantum of consumption, sure. Uh, 10x, we've gone to close to 11 gigs per user per month in a market that used to be starved of, I mean, we did not even know a gig, to be very honest, about six years ago, right? So that's the other thing where it's become almost on tap and people, there are several factors which have enabled this, but these are the two huge, uh, I would say, seismic shifts that have happened. And uh, they're definitely now changed the course of how content is being produced, distributed and consumed. Future, I mean, it's a crystal ball. Lots of people have lots of theories about where things could. Uh, one thing is certain that it's not going to be a linear mode of consumption for sure. Uh, whether there will be any amount of linear consumption or not uh, is anybody's guess. But I think there is still a definitely significantly long window for that. Um, but there is, there is no, no one's calling it the death of TV yet. But uh, there is certainly, every content creator now has had to wake up and think about how their content is going to be distributed and cannot just say, all right, I'll shoot it, put it on a channel, and that's the end of it. No, they cannot anymore. Nobody can. And that's the big shift that's happened in creators' minds. Right. So you're an enabler for all these content producers. Mm. So how do you see kind of uh, the technology that is being used by these OTT platforms? How much can it help in, say, customer acquisition, customer retention, the user experience part of it? See, um, as Apalya, we, our mission has been to enable the OTT aspirations of any content creator, aggregator, distributor, whoever it is, right? We have, Apalya has always seen uh, ourselves as the distributor, our enablers of this, this ecosystem. Having said that, uh, what brings people to the service or what brings makes people is content, no doubt. There is no getting away from that. That's without that you're nowhere. But there is, there are, I mean, there are various studies. There are uh, we are forty plus and counting OTT apps, yeah. and everyone's pretty much gone over the top, okay. right? Either on a single device or multiple devices. In that scenario, there are a lot. There is there is a lot of good content being produced. Right. So what then is the next thing you need to do to retain your customer, retain your engage them? That's when experience comes into play. Right. The kind of user experience you are able to deliver, uh, right from the ease of usage, because you are dealing with people who haven't been doing this for a decade. It's not right. like the TV. No, they were in the uh, like a legacy production business. They were not. Involved. Yeah, no, you're, we're talking about the creators, and even from the consumer side, I'm saying um, it's not uh, something that you've been doing for a very long time. Right. So, hence, you're not an expert at it. The easier I make my service easier to, I mean, the easier to consume, the better my chances are about of retaining you. Right. So that's where experience is a huge thing. The next step, of course, is personalizing that experience. Right. Right? And that's where so you can... So adding to that on OTT, discoverability is a huge challenge. Ah, yes. Right, because there's so much content available that user cannot find what to watch. They cannot decide on something. The discoverability is True. basically one problem that uh, the the platforms are trying to solve. So, yeah. what do you have to say about that? Uh, you hit the nail on the head in the sense that a lot of people um, today, a lot of good services, I mean, we serve, uh, you know, Vodafone India, Idea Limited, we serve Sun TV and as Apalya, we've been powering all of these platforms and there is no dearth of content. Uh, very often, it is the ability to serve what you would like at this moment uh, which is which is what differentiates that and discoverability is the more we personalize uh, this product the more we personalize that experience the easier people are going to they really don't care at the end of the day right. you know in the initial stages you would see advertising lines about how I have 10,000 movies and I have 20,000 nobody gives a damn right. 
if I can find the five movies that I want, that to, I want to watch, right. it's great for me. If I can't, then, you know, it doesn't even register on my radar. So that's where we want to get to. With, and with that in mind, we've also kind of, so we do, we develop our own recommendation engine. It's called MyRecco. Uh, we put that in um, and the idea is to learn from your choices, learn from the options you uh, exercise and options that you don't and actively make sure that the next time you come, it, things are a lot easier to find. But that's going to be the key for everybody. I think. Right. Recommendation, uh, being able to learn from a user's experience, I think that's at the core. So also, see, there are so many apps, so many platforms investing a lot in the content, but monetization still remains a channel, kind of a challenge. So from the technology point of view, how can you make that kind of more streamlined? The way we see monetization, uh, at least, uh, you know, when it comes to our customers, and there are several debates that Apalya has, um, we look at ourselves as business partners uh, and not just technology partners. Right. And hence, it is important to have that discussion uh, almost every quarter and saying, where are we going? Uh, what's the end game? Uh, if, the, if you can call it an end game, frankly. Or what's the immediate milestone that we're trying to achieve, right? Monetization... For, for for us is always at Apollo has always seemed like a uh, it's a spectrum. Yeah. You start with at some point. I mean, it's it has to be a word. There in a market of this size, it cannot be subscriber based. Well, you know there are models out there, and I realize I'm kind of uh, you know there are some very obvious examples that will be popped. There is one obvious example that will be popped at me saying, "Hey, that's an S word only business." But we also know what kind of business that is. Um, you know, uh, I won't name the N word here. But uh, but other than that, if you look at the trend and way the way folks are going. I think a market this size, if you plan to be catering to the uh, larger mass, mass of yeah. this market, you will need to first get to a certain significant user base, monetize it through advertising and a freemium uh, proposition, then tell people what is that proposition that you have which is going to make them pay. Right. You have to create that s word proposition in their heads after having given them a sense of the experience. So what you're saying is that for some more time, AVOD, that is ad, is, uh, yes. uh, the ad-driven model that is going yes. to... And it's a transition. Uh, they, by no means are we saying that do not have an S-word business today. Please do because that's a skill you have to learn. Yeah. When you start collecting whatever it is, 20 rupees, 50 rupees a month, 100, 200 from a month from a user, you need to know how to keep that and keep renewing that. Right. That's a skill you have to learn. But my point is if today you have a 95 is to 5 uh, ratio, we see that slowly progressing to a 70-30 over the next couple of years, maybe, as the market kind of gets sensitized towards paying for good content or paying for a personalized experience. And it will probably be at a 60-40 at some stage. But AWOD is not going to disappear uh, by any means. You are still going to be dependent on advertising. So last question, in a country like India where uh, 4G is available everywhere, but the network is still not that good, right? And the data consumption could be patchy. Mm. Like the, the data network could be patchy yes. and so, so is your consumption then, right? So how do you solve that challenge being a, like a technology player here, an enabler here? Several ways uh, and this is one of the things that Apalya works really hard at. Uh, everything from, you know, you know the technology um, enablers like you know, adaptive bitrate, right? We typically have multi profiles, multiple profiles. So, we, whatever your network, we might grad, you know, downgrade you to a slightly lower bitrate and slightly lower resolution, but your content still continues to stream. The moment you get into a better zone, your you know your content, I mean your this thing is upgraded. The stream is upgraded. That is one. Offline downloads, for instance, has been you know uh, a lot of people did that a little later in the day, but we know from our experience in mobile that that is critical to the experience. People's ability to download content when they are in a good network and then watch it at their will and when they have the time. That's another uh, tweak completely. Smooth streaming. There are several technologies that are at play, but it's essentially to manage inconsistent network conditions. Uh, that's a skill you will learn uh, in markets that have these challenges, right. typically emerging markets. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Not at all. Thanks so much for your time.